Thank you very much for joining me today, Aaron. Thank you as well. You're familiar with what this is. Basically, we like to talk to other car enthusiasts and just sort of find out your story. What was your first car? Why are you a car enthusiast? How the heck did you get into this hobby anyhow? And so me and you have quite the history. Um, you worked with me for a long time. We've spent a lot of time at the racetrack together. So I think this is going to be a fun one. My first question, as it usually is, what was your first car? <laughs> So my first car, it was a hand-me-down from my mom. It was a 98 GMC Jimmy. It had 215,000 miles on it. It was black, it had black leather, sunroof, you name it, it had it. It was sweet until it got wrecked. Oh, okay. That, that's usually a follow-up question. What happened to the first car? So I actually didn't know that. I thought that the first car was the other one that we that we tinted. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that it was a Jimmy. What, so, 98 Jimmy, a ton of miles on it. Obviously, you can picture that in your head. It's kind of a beater, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But what did you love about it? Everything. It, it's something about your first car, you know? It, you know, it's, a, it's probably a pilot for most people, and this one definitely was, but it, it, nothing will beat that first vehicle. And then you wrecked it. What happened? Was there a story there, or was it, was it boring? So I actually didn't wreck it. It wasn't me. I was, started dating Hannah. Um, and it was parked in her driveway at her mom's on Christmas Eve and we were out at her grandparents. My car was there and, uh, her stepfather at the time heard a noise and came out and somebody had smashed the back end of my car in their driveway. Oh no. Yeah. Did they run? And they ran. So you never got them? Nope. Okay. That's kind of an exciting story. Yeah. That's unfortunate. No, it wasn't too bad, but it was enough where we kind of just like fixed it and, and got rid of it. And how long did you have that thing for? Uh, I don't know. I probably had it for probably a little over a year. And then I bought my Monte Carlo, which was my first actual purchase vehicle from myself. Gotcha. Okay. So tell me about that. How much did you pay for it? How long did you save for it? How did you get the money? So I didn't really save for it. I had a little bit of money, um, but I got a loan from the bank and it was, it was an 06 Monte Carlo. Again, it was black, it had white pinstripes, um, leather interior, sunroof, just like the last one. Um, it only had, I want to say, 40,000 miles on it when I bought it, and it only cost me $7,500. So Very nice. The, I don't know how old I was. I was probably 17 at that point. So seven and a half is obviously not a lot of money, but $140 payment was a lot for, I feel like, a 17-year-old at that point. Yeah, for sure. My first car I paid 3000 for, and I just worked, I worked at a go-kart track, and then the first one that I financed was a Dodge Dakota that I paid 5000 mm -hmm. for. And that payment, I think, was $105. And it scared the heck out of uh -huh. me. So I, I can relate for sure. And then the Monte Carlo, I remember. So we tinted mm -hmm. that car. We messed up the tint on that car. And then I think messed up your defrosters, didn't yep. we? Yeah, that was early, early days of blackout, like probably second year in business. But then you had that car up until after you started yeah, working started for working. it. Yep. Okay, and what did you get rid of that to get? So... I was probably at least six months after I started working at Blackout. Um, I sold that, and I think I only, I think I had that Monte Carlo for four or five years. Um, I only put like 30,000 miles on it in those couple of years, and I sold it. I think I sold it for seven grand. So I really wow. didn't lose money on that car. Um, but I traded it in. I didn't trade it in. I sold it privately, and then I bought my first Camaro which was gotcha. a 14 SS. Okay, that's the part where things start to get fun. The Monte Carlo is a cool car, but obviously the Camaro mm -hmm. was a, a, a big leap. So why a Camaro? Camaro is obviously more of an enthusiast car, a muscle car, a sportier car. Why make the jump to that? Was that always a dream of yours or? Um, I don't know what led me to the Camaro. I always liked the older Camaros. Um, I was always around a lot of older vehicles, uh, mainly because of my grandfather. But um, yeah, I jumped to that Camaro. I saw this, I saw the fifth gen on the roads before. And obviously you can tell the differences between the packages on the cars. And between say an LS to a normal SS to two SS, and then obviously a ZL1. Um, ZL1 at that point was way unattainable for me, but um, the SS had the, the updated style lights and everything and it, it just looked good it had the nice hood vent so that's that's what i strive for when i, I was looking to get another vehicle 
my dad thought I was crazy for trading in or selling this car for a much, much bigger loan at that point. And <laughs> what do you think now? <laughs> yeah, seriously. He, he just lets me go now. He's like, yep, you know what you're doing. You're, you can do it. But um, not that it really matters. But I also, when I had my Monte Carlo, I wouldn't drive that thing in the winter. So I kept it nice. I remember the thing was spotless. That's when I also bought my 97 Blazer. I bought that when I was working at, working at Late Trip Chevy. Okay. And I got a hell of a deal on that thing. I think I paid 2500 bucks and it had 80,000 miles on it. And it lasted me for, again, another five years. Then I sold that and I actually made money on that blazer five years later. Nice. I love the blazer. It was, it was nice. So I'm interested in, you mentioned briefly your grandfather. You're around cars all the time because of your grandfather. Mm -hmm. and I, I think that most, most car enthusiasts were like that because there was something in our past that led us to be attracted to these machines. So your case, what was it about your grandfather that exposed you to cars a lot? My grandfather, he... Before I was even born, he was in the military. He did, he was a, a field, I wouldn't want to say engineer, but mechanic. So he was always fixing the big trucks out in the field, whatever. Um, and then so my he, grandfather did World War II yeah. for the Air Force. Awesome. Um, so when he came back, um, he was stationed in Germany for a while, and then he came back to the States. Um, he became a mechanic for Chevy, and he was a master tech for Chevy for years and years and years. Um, until he broke his back and then he pretty much couldn't really work too much after that. Um, but throughout the years of me growing up and especially once I started to get vehicles of my own, um, anything that would go wrong, I would just take it up to him and we would work on it together. So especially on the, that first Jimmy, I replaced ball joints. I, I replaced everything underneath that vehicle. It was all rusted to hell and back. Um, but not only that, he also, he was, uh, on a pit crew as well for dirt racing and, and asphalt racing. So was racing. my grandpa. So he Jennerstown. Was, he did at Jennerstown, uh, Lernerville. Very good. Um, just recently, I mean, he stopped now, but he was at Late Trip Speedway as an inspector guy out there. But yeah, he, he would always take me to all kinds of races too. So he, he pretty much jump-started my, my car career. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that explains the love for Chevy, mm -hmm. for fast stuff, the race cars. Very cool. I like that story. And and my favorite, a lot of my favorite memories when I was a kid um, were around cars, as I'm sure with you as well, mm -hmm. working on them. You learn so much, yeah. um, especially when you're young and have a beater mm -hmm. like you and me both did. You're constantly fixing it. You learn all sorts of life lessons that are beyond just working on the car by having a car that is a piece of crap yeah. that, that is killing you all the time. You, That's cool. You don't really realize when you're younger how much that actually helps you when you're growing up. Because I know, I, I know so many people my age that don't know how to change a tire. I agree. So, like, I, I honestly feel like that's something that is really necessary, especially since all, all of our lives pretty much are, are around vehicles. You yep. have to have a vehicle to do anything. I was recently, side note, I was in uh, St. Croix and got a flat tire kind of in the middle of nowhere. And there, there was no, no way to get it mm -hmm. fixed other than use the spare that was in the rental car. And I mean, changing tires, obviously no big deal for us, but like there are guys that can't do it. Mm -hmm. And I thought like, what if, what would you do in this case? Yeah, you just have to try call? to, yeah, how do you jack it up? I mean, you know, if they don't know that, they don't know that. But I, what I really want to talk about is this thing because um, you're young. I mean, you're under 30 years old still, right? Mm -hmm. And you have purchased what is a lot of people's dream car. And that is the ZL1 1LE track pack, right? Mm -hmm. Track, yep. whatever. And uh, stealth wrapped it. Beautiful car. I'm I'm sure they can see it in camera in the back. But how much do you love this thing? Give me the details of this freaking monster. Uh, it's definitely a world of a difference from the last Camaro. Um, obviously, this one is supercharged at 650 horsepower, whereas my last one probably had a little bit around 500 horsepower. But that that the difference from 150 horsepower is, is pretty massive on something like this. And especially with the technology difference between the years as well. Um, but this car, I haven't driven it too much yet and I haven't gotten to take it on a track yet, but by far the most, I, I don't know. I, I love this car the most out of all of the vehicles I've had. For sure. Yeah, I can see why. I, I have not ridden in it yet, have I? Or briefly. I don't know if you have or not. I don't think I did. I uh, I'm excited to see it on the track. What do you think it's going to feel like compared to 
the SS? Because you tracked the SS a lot. Yeah. I probably had three three track sessions, I think, on the, the last Camaro. Three weekends. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I mean, just in a couple weeks, I'll be taking this one. So, um, it, I feel like the difference has to be massive. Um, just between the 6th Gen normal Z01 and the 1LE package that's on this, it's the difference of, I want to say, 15 seconds on the track. So, like, wow. if it's a difference in 15 seconds on pretty much the same car, how is it compared to a car that's four years older and isn't track focused? Right. So, this thing is going to, it's going to be a million times faster. And the cornering is the biggest thing. And coming out of the corners, hitting the apex on this car is going to be the most important thing. It already is, but like. And braking. You're not going to lose brakes on this one. I'm afraid, honestly. <laughs> I'm really afraid. <laughs> So in, in your last car, I can I can already kind of answer your scariest moment in the the last Camaro. I think probably happened on the track, right? Yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. So um, I had everything prepped for the track. It had relatively I don't want to say newer pads, but it had good life on the pads. Um, but I was driving it hard. Obviously, it was the last day of the track event. I believe it was the very last session. I think, and I had to cut it short because I had lost my pads completely. So I had no, I, I couldn't stop at all. Thankfully, it wasn't on a stretch. It wasn't on a straightaway. It was on the back half of the course where you're coming off of one corner. You have a little bit of time to speed up just to go into the next one. So I didn't have any brakes and I had to spin it out into the grass or I, I don't know what was going to happen. But <laughs> yeah, that was definitely scary. Um, I learned my lesson for the second time. That was the first track session yeah. that I ever did. Uh, the second time, I also, I not so much of the same issue, still brake related, um, but I was boiling over on my second time. That's Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. So thankfully, I, I realized what was happening and I, I caught myself early and I just took it off the track before anything happened. But again, last day of the track weekend on my last session. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen with this. This thing's so track focused. I think mm -hmm. you're going to have a, a great experience with that. So Aaron, like I said, thank you for the time sitting down with us. Um, I'm anxious to see if you'll beat the GT4 at the track this year. Hopefully we can make it to the same track weekend this year. I think that you're probably going to have a pretty good chance. I love that thing. And it's cool to hear your, your car story. Cool to see that you had a similar experience with me. Your grandfather was into cars and you know, that, that got you started in the hobby. So thanks again for joining us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. It was a blast.